Right. Now, one of the things that comes up whenever I speak about sweet stuff is, well, what do you sweeten things with? What do you sweeten things with if you're making um, cakes or if you're making um, muffins or something? Um, I've used quite a bit of honey this morning and a lot of people will say to me, oh, but I'm diabetic, I can't use that. Now, I found for me personally that honey works the best to sweeten things with. I like the taste, you may not like the taste. It's the most natural product, uh, especially if it's raw and or organic. Uh, it, that's how it's found in nature and small quantities our body can handle. I find even some diabetics can actually handle honey efficiently. Now I was severely hyperglycemic and I can handle honey now that my diet is in balance. Particularly when you combine it with things that contain fat like the coconut cream or the macadamia nut uh, or coconut for example. Um, anything that contains fat helps to slow down the absorption of sugar. So I find that my body responds well to honey. Some people find their bodies respond better to fructose. Now I've got some fructose here and this looks as a white crystalline powder. In the UK this is sold as a diabetic sweetener. And the reason for that is that fructose, if your blood sugar has dropped, if your blood sugar is supposed to be there and it drops, and you put fructose into it, it stabilizes, it brings it back to where it should be, very similar to fresh fruit, slightly higher than fresh fruit, but similar to it. Slightly higher because this doesn't contain water soluble fiber, but the fructose molecule has a stabilizing effect on blood sugar. When you put refined cane sugar into the body, your blood sugar shoots way up like that. And that's when the brain starts not working as well as it should because your blood sugar is all over the place and then it tends to plummet down because your pancreas overproduces insulin. So down comes the, pan down comes the blood, sug um, blood sugar and you can find you or your children suffering from mood swings or hyperactive behavior or feeling miserable or whiny or uh, emotional. You can feel very emotional and want to cry all the time, for example. So I find fructose has a very stable effect. However, this is still a processed food. It has no nutrients in it. It's been stripped of all the nutrients. It is just pure fructose, pure carbohydrate. So there's no nutritional value other than from carbohydrates. So it will stabilize the blood sugar. And this is great for things like baking cakes and muffins because honey, because it's a liquid sweetener and because it's got uh, some strange properties, tends to make everything go very runny and fluid. And you find cakes don't bake very well. They don't set very well. So, and they don't rise nicely. Whereas with fructose, it works very well. You must remember that fructose is about a third sweeter than sugar is, than cane sugar is. So you use slightly less of it, about a third, whatever, if the recipe says a cup, you use two thirds of a cup. So fructose can be used for things like that. I have recently also found this on the market. This is called pure coconut sugar. And um, it tastes like honey and fructose kind of mixed. It's like crystallized sugar. I've not used this to, to bake with, but it's very nice to eat and I find my grandsons like and they come and ask me for a teaspoon of it every now and again. You could use it as a jam, for example, and put it onto um, a rice cakes or onto your, your whole wheat bread or your rye bread. And that's called pure coconut sugar and this is imported from, also from Thailand. I find most of these foods that are imported from Thailand you'll find in the supermarket section where the curries or the Thai foods are and everybody's making Thai curries these days and Thai food so I find these things are pretty easy to get hold of these days just mainstream supermarkets carry them. We have a product on the market called Malted Carob and I made this because I love to drink hot sweet uh, drinks like, um, like hot chocolate for example and growing up as a child my mum used to give us Ovaltine when we went to bed at night which was made with barley malt but of course it had sugar in it. So this contains barley malt, it contains fructose to stabilize the blood sugar, it contains some vanilla powder, and then it contains carob. So we call it malted carob because it's the barley malt and the carob combined. And this is a powder that we add, I add hot water to it and drink it just with hot water. You can add, Mark likes to add fresh cream to this. Coconut cream is particularly delicious and remember that coconut cream does not contain any cholesterol. It does contain some saturated fat, but because it's liquid at room temperature, it's mainly unsaturated fat. Very high water content for coconut cream anyway. So you can have coconut cream with this. You could have fresh cream with it. You could have some soy milk if you wanted to in small quantities. Just use soy milk that contains no sugar and added fats and preservatives and flavorants and things like that. 
And this is a lovely hot drink. By the way, this malted carob can replace the honey and the carob powder in the macadamia fudge that I made. You can just use macadamia nut and the malted carob. Unfortunately, this is only available in South Africa at the moment, unless you order off our website. And the website is www.mary-anns.com. And then, of course, you can use one of the best, my, my, in fact, more natural even than the, the honey and, and, and um, better for people like diabetics, would be to sweeten with things like dates. Now, I've got some fresh, uh, not these are dried dates. Um, and these have had their pips removed. And this is what I use to make the, the um, date and coconut balls. It's equal quantities of dates, which have been softened in a double boiler. I did this in a previous DVD and combined with coconut and you roll that in balls and I keep it in the freezer so it's really chewy but sometimes I don't have enough time to um, make the date balls and stand there and I actually feel like eating it right now and then I just mix coconut and fresh dates together and I just spoon mouthfuls of fresh dates and coconut into my mouth and it's equally delicious. So dates, dates can be used, you can soak them, you can blend them and you can use them as a spread like a jam on um, uh, your bread or your rice cakes or your, your uh, corn thins. Uh, dates can be used to sweeten things like banana bread, very delicious in banana bread. You can use them in muffins and cakes as well. They're exceptionally high in iron, very high in magnesium, potassium, contain calcium, B vitamins. They don't upset the brain. These are probably one of the best sweeteners you can use. If you're worrying about sweetening things like cereal, you can use what I call banana milk. You take banana and you blend that with water in a blender and you pour that over the cereal. If you still want it sweeter, either raw honey, you can put chopped dates in, you can put fructose powder. Um, if you want to make um, a, a, a chocolate flavored, when I say chocolate flavored, chocolate flavored cereal and your children are in the transition, say so they've gone from chocolate cereal, you can use normal um, corn flakes or rice um, cereals and you can put the malted carob on it with a banana milk. That's another way to do it, to give that sort of chocolatey flavour. But one of the things people do like to use to sweeten with, either just boiling water and make a hot drink, is to use fruit juices that are 100% pure. I use the series juices. Um, I use them because I think they're the best on the market. There's uh, also liquid fruit is available. Um, but the series is available internationally. I know it's available in the United States and some of the states. It's available in the UK from a variety of stores. And um, it's one of the nicest pure juices on the market that I've seen. Even in my travels, traveling overseas, I haven't tasted one that tastes as good as these. And they have wonderful flavors as well. The grape juice is particularly nice, wonderful for doing um, sport. You can um, put this into a bottle neat or with water and use it as a sports drink. It's isotonic in that it's completely balanced as far as electrolytes are concerned. It's stabilizing on your blood sugar and it has a, a long term effect on your blood sugar. It doesn't shoot it up and drop it down like a lot of the other sports drinks do. So I really like the, the grape juice and the series have uh, liquid food make the red one and series makes this white one which I just said is available. Right, there are also some great jams available. Now, of course, you can make your own jam with any preservative free dried fruit just by soaking it overnight and then blending it the next day. But if you want a more normal jam taste that actually tastes like jam, then this is a fantastic product. I really, I think these people, if I had a prize that I could give out for the best um, natural product that tastes like sort of the normal stuff, replacement and yet it tastes exceptional. Uh, to me these jams are nicer tasting than any of the jams that contain sugar. These are the St. Delphor jams. They're made in France. I find them not badly priced. You know, considering I don't have jam every single day, uh, it's still a, a treat. If I feel like something sweet after a meal, I'll have a rice cake because I'm gluten intolerant. So I'll have a rice cake or a corn thin with um, some raspberry jam on it or some strawberry jam. They've got um, marmalade, they've got beautiful fig jam. And what makes these so special is that it's just the fruit and grape juice. Well, that's all it is. Mixed together, it actually tells you the ingredients on the back here. It contains no preservative flavorings of colorant. It's made from unsweetened grape juice um, and fruit pectin and raspberries, for example. So it's just the fruit and the grape juice and um, pectin, which is a substance from the skins of fruit 
uh, that helps to actually f let it set once you've been boiling it. So the fruit is cooked, obviously you've got to boil fruit with the grape juice to make it really sticky. Um, in today's fashionable terms we'd call it a reduction because that's what you're doing, you're getting rid of all the water and you get the sticky amount at the bottom. But it tastes delicious, these, 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 um, these jams. So there's a lot, you can see there's a lot of product on the market. I don't use any of the other sweeteners. I don't use artificial sweeteners that contain aspartame like um, candrel and NutraSweet. I don't touch them because they're known to mess the hormonal system up and the central nervous system and brain. And I already had problems with my brain with my behavior. I don't need something else. We know, for example, that aspartame sweeteners give, um, can cause headaches, can cause mild epileptic seizures. So to me, they're just not an option at all. I'd rather have sugar before I use an artificial sweetener. Other sweeteners like saccharine and sorbitol are known to cause um, cancer of the urinary tract. Then there's things like stevia and some of the other plant extracts that are used as sweeteners. I don't like to use stevia because I find it does cause diarrhea, which is not a lot of fun. It also gives that artificial sweetener taste and I don't like that taste. I want my food to taste natural and out of all the sweeteners I find these give the foods the most natural taste. Um, and you can, as I said, use them in, in most of the things. Substitute fructose for sugar in anything that you bake. Any of your old favorite recipes. You've got your jams and you've got your juices. There's not much else you need to sweeten.